Hello, welcome back to my classroom at home. I have another story this week for you from the Bible, my favorite book. You guys say it with me this week. This is my favorite book because the Bible is true. The Bible comes from God. The Bible is all about God. Yes, you've got it. This is the best book in the whole world. And today we have another story from the Bible. Now we've been learning from the Bible that God made everything. And when he made it, he made it by using his words and it was there. And then he said, it is good. But we also learned that on the sixth day of creation, the day God created all the animals, he did a very special creation to end that day. On that day, he didn't just speak, but he actually used his hands and he formed man and woman. And he created man and woman in the image of God. He created us in his image. That is different from all of the other animals. But then if you remember, that sneaky snake slithered into the garden and he confused Adam and Eve. He told them lies. He told them God really didn't want their best, that God just wanted to keep them from being like him. We already know that God created Adam and Eve in his image. Now, no one can be God except God because God is one. God is the one true and living God. We can't be God, but we are already created in his image. But the sneaky snake tricked Adam and Eve. They believed him. They ate of that fruit and they found out very quickly it didn't make them a God. In fact, it separated them from God because now they had broken and sick hearts and their sick hearts separated them from God. And God sent them out of the Garden of Eden because they could not stay where God was and they could not stay where the tree of life was because if they did, they would be separated for all eternity from God. But God did not leave them without a plan because God loves them. God loves all people and he has a plan to help bring us back to him. And that plan is in his word. Now, today's story comes lots of years later after the earth has begun to fill up with people. But remember, because of Adam and Eve's sin, now every human being that is born is born with a broken and sick heart. We all are born with broken and sick hearts. And broken and sick hearts make choices to do things that are ugly and mean and disobedient. And the world was beginning to fill up with people who had broken and sick hearts. And those people, the Bible says, were doing very mean and ugly things to each other. They were hurting each other. They were causing lots of pain. They were destroying the beautiful creation that God had made for man. And when God looked down on all of that hurt and pain and destruction, God said, hmm, I'm sad. 
I'm really sad that I made those people. I'm sad. I think I just need to wipe them out. Wipe all that ugliness and all that pain and all that suffering away. I just need to wipe it out because I don't like to see that. And so God made a plan to flood the earth. Now, what is a flood? Well, a flood is when it rains and rains and rains and the creeks fill up and they overflow and the rivers fill up and they overflow. And all of a sudden there is water everywhere. Now, around our world today, floods are still happening. But this flood was different because God said in this flood, I'm not just covering up the grass and some of the plants. This flood and rain is going to continue until the trees are gone. You can't see trees. They're all underwater. And this flood is going to keep raining and growing until even big hills are underwater. And this rain and this flood is going to keep growing until even the mountains are underwater. The Bible tells us that this flood was going to cover the entire earth with water. The land was going to all be under the water. Now, before God sent that flood, he looked down on the earth and he saw one man who still loved him and trusted him and worshiped him. That one man's name was Noah. God looked down and saw Noah and saw that Noah obeyed him and loved him and trusted him and was trying to follow God's heart. And so God said, I'm going to save Noah and his family. And so God gave Noah a plan. And in God's plan for Noah, he had Noah build a big boat. Now, this was not just a normal boat like you and I would see. You can tell that by looking at it. This was a very big boat. God gave Noah very specific plans for this boat. He didn't just say, build a boat and leave Noah on his own. No, he had a plan. He told Noah how big to build it. He told Noah what shape to build it in. He told Noah what wood to use to build it. He told Noah everything Noah needed to know to build this boat. So Noah wasn't left on his own to do it. God gave Noah the plan, but Noah had a choice. Would he listen and obey? He did. People all around Noah, those people with the sad, sick hearts, laughed at Noah. They made fun of Noah. It took Noah a long time to build that boat. He didn't build it in a few days. It took years and years and years for Noah to build that boat. And all through that time, people laughed at Noah. They called him names. They told him all how silly he was. But Noah kept listening to God and doing what God told him to do. And when the boat was finished, God began to send animals. And the animals began to come two by two, one boy and one girl. And as they came, they would get on the boat. Now, Noah couldn't talk to the animals, but God could. And God sent the animals. And even the fierce animals that might have been enemies of other animals were not enemies on Noah's boat because God is in charge of everything. And God made sure that the animals were safe inside the boat. Once all of the animals were in the boat, then God told Noah, it's time for you and your family to get in the boat, in the ark. This boat was called an ark. I think I forgot to tell you that. This boat was called an ark because it's a very special boat. So God told Noah and his family, get in the ark. 
because that's how I'm going to save you and your family and all of those animals from the great flood that's about to come. So Noah and his family got in the ark. Nobody else chose to get in the ark with Noah and his family. They laughed, they jeered, they called them names, they told them how foolish they were for doing this. But then it began to rain. And the Bible tells us that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Now that's a long time for it to rain because that's like a whole month of never stopping rain all day, all night. We can't even really think about that because we don't ever have that much rain here in Texas. But that's not even the most amazing part of this story because it rained for 40 days and 40 nights and so much water was on the earth that even the mountains were covered up. No land was visible anymore. But then the rain stopped. So, okay, it's time to get off the ark, right? No, because remember there's so much water that even the mountains are covered up. So Noah and his family had to stay on the ark and God saved them from the floodwaters on the ark. Now, always before when I thought about this story, it was kind of hard for me to think about how long were they on the ark and what would that feel like and what was that really like? Well, this year, when I'm reading this story and thinking about this story, I'm seeing it in a very different way. Because when you think about living on something like this, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, then the Bible tells us after the rain stopped for another 110 days, they had to stay on the ark. Because for that 110 days, the earth was still covered with water and they could not get out. So how long is that? Well, the reason I said this year it really hits me in a different way as I read this Bible story and as I understand what Noah and his family went through. Because right now, you and I have been closed up in our houses, for the most part, for about 130 days. Noah and his family lived in the ark for 150. 50 days. We can understand a little more what it was like for Noah and his family. Now, except you and I can get out in our yards, and some of us are getting to go do a few things now and then, like go to the grocery store or go to church. But Noah and his family could not go anywhere or do anything that was not on the ark for 150 days, the Bible says. We understand that time and that being closed up in a space, just Noah and his family and the animals for such a long time. It makes a little more sense to me now how hard it was for Noah and his family and for those animals to be stuck in that small space for that many days, because now I kind of have an understanding of how long that is. So if you think back to when we started with being stuck at home, not getting to go to school, not getting to go anyplace, to right now, that's kind of like Noah and his family on the ark. But God didn't leave them there for any much longer. After 150 days, the Bible tells us that the water receded and it tells us that God kept his promise because back before he sent the flood, this is what God told Noah. He said, look, I'm going to flood the earth and destroy all the flesh under the heavens. Everything that breathes, I will destroy. Everything on earth will die, but I will make a covenant agreement, a promise to you and your family, your wife and your sons and your son's wives, you must go in the ark. 
God kept his promise. He saved Noah and his family. And 150 days later, the ark landed on a mountain and it was time to open the door and get out. And when they opened the door and they got out, there was a beautiful rainbow in the sky. And God told Noah, that rainbow is a sign of my promise that I will never destroy the whole earth again. And Noah learned that God had a plan to save all people. Just like God had a plan to save Noah and his family, God had a plan to save all people. You know that plan. Jesus. Jesus came to save sinners. So from, now, from that point on, God was not going to flood the earth to save people from the hurt and the pain of broken, sinful, sick hearts. No, God had a plan to send a Savior, and Jesus came to save sinners. God is so good. He is so good to have plans to save people. And God is in charge of everything. And we've seen that in the stories that we've been reading from the Bible. God is good. His plan to save people was Jesus. And you and I know Jesus came down to be born as a baby. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried in the tomb, but on the third day, he rose again. And that's the gospel truth. God wants sick, broken hearts to be healed and become healthy hearts because he loves people and he made a plan to save sinners. God made promises to Noah. He kept his promises. God's word is full of his promises to you and to me and to all people. We know God keeps his promises. Let's thank him for his plans, for his love, and for his promises. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much that you help us see Noah's story in a different way this year because we've kind of been closed up and locked down in small spaces for the same amount of time that Noah and his family were locked down in that ark so long ago when the flood happened. Thank you that you had a plan to save Noah and his family. Thank you that you have a plan to save sinners. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died so that my sick heart and every other person's sick heart can become a healthy heart because of what Jesus did. Thank you for being good and loving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, it's been good to share this story with you again this week. I hope you are doing well in, well, your house isn't really like the ark, but it might feel like that a little bit. So I hope during our time when we are stuck that we'll use our time in our houses to spend more time learning from the Bible about God because that's what gave Noah a healthy heart. That's what will give us a healthy heart. I will see you again next week. Goodbye, friends. Have a great week.